All right, so I got some shield tape here. Let me start cutting it up. I'm gonna do a start. Maybe it's kind of it's kind of a tight cavity. It's gonna be not easy to do, that's for sure. But you know what? With shield tape, it doesn't have to look pretty. It just has to be effective. So don't worry about too much of how it works. You just want to make it sure it works. Now, wait a minute. Now, I want to be... I'm looking at something here. Oh, this is something we might want to deal with right now. And that's the size of these holes here. So before I get too carried away with the shield tape, yeah, let's make sure the control pots are going to fit in these holes. It looks like the push-pull pots look to be an 8 millimeter uh, bushing, and it looks like the volume pots were 3 quarter inch bushing, which is just the opposite of our system. Our push-pull pots we use are 3, three eighths, uh, I shouldn't say 3, I said 3 quarter before, 3 eighths uh, bushing, and the uh, and the our volume pot, our Ghost to 11 volume pot, is 8 millimeters because a lot of guitars are 8 millimeters. The majority, any guitar made manufactured outside of the United States is going to have the 8 millimeter size bushing. So here's our volume pot. So there would be no problem with it fitting into the volumes down here because these are 3 8 inch holes. So they fit just fine. There's a little bit of play, but once you get the washers in there and tighten it down, it's not going to move. If anything, it's going to be a little tighter because the edges of the, the lock washer, star washer we provide, will just bite down on the edges of that hole, and it's it's just it's going to be great. It's going to be just wonderful. It's going to fit just fine. So, however, looking at our push pull pot, I don't think it's going to fit into those. So let's take these off here. And sure enough, yeah, it's going to be too small, too big. So we need to enlarge those holes. So there's two ways to go about it. You can uh, do, uh, let's put the nuts and bolts back in here. I always like to put the nuts and bolts and washers, everything back on the part. That way you don't lose them. If you start uh, taking stuff off and leave it laying around, next thing you know, you're going to be guessing what's what. So... Uh, I always like to put it back on. So I'll set this aside. So we have to enlarge these holes. So you can do two ways. Uh, one, the way I'm going to do it is with the reamer. And the second way to do it is with uh, a drill bit. So basically, get your drill bit out. You have, If you don't have drill bits, you're going to have to get some. And then uh, just what I do is I start with one that clears. I find the one that fits through there. Then I go to the next size up. And carefully, don't do it on this side. On this side, carefully start opening them up. Now when you do it, it's going to be hard to see here. What I do is I always stand the guitar on end. So I'll flip it over here. So I flip it on end, and then I come in like this. So that way if I drop... The drill bit or whatever, it's not dropping on the top of the guitar. It's just going to fall straight down onto the mat. So what I do, if I had a drill bit, I would go first the first side that doesn't clear with my hand. You may want to use a rag to kind of hold on to the drill bit. Or if you have a glove, a leather glove or whatever, that way you don't cut your hands if it's a really sharp drill bit. And just kind of easily twist it in there and go through the wood. It's going to be tough because this is maple. This is a hard wood. So it's going to be tough. You know, some woods, like all, they're a little softer. But just go through it. Now, I'm going to use a reamer. Okay. So let me get my reamer. Let's set this down. So this, move this out of the way a little bit. You see, this is my reamer. You can buy these um, at any hardware store. They're not that expensive. You can see my witness marks here. What I mean by witness marks where there's there's lines, that, or it's, I call it a witness mark is where anything that shows that they were once attached to that point. And you can see where I pushed this in up to this point. And uh, I know that's gonna be good. But another way to do it, and probably the best way, is to take 
the nut off of here, okay? I want to slide it on here. These reamers don't cost that much. See, that's where it hits right there. So I'm going to take a little bit of tape. I'm going to wrap it around there slightly more than what is where the, the nut stops. So that way you have a little bit extra, because you're going to need a little bit more extra clearance, okay? So that's where we're going to stop at. So I'm going to take this, put this back on here so we don't lose it. Set it off to the side, hold my guitar upright. Uh, maybe you'll be able to see this, I'm not sure if the camera's going to let me show it, but stick it in there, hold it back a little bit, and just kind of twist lightly. As you can see, I'm already kind of hitting the tape mark, so I'm going to pull it back a little bit. Basically, I need to go back to where my witness marks were at. I think that's where it definitely showed that it works. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go back to here. You know, with and doing this by hand, one thing about doing it by hand, you know, the risk of making a hole way too big is it's not going to happen because you're doing it by hand. You're taking your time. And that's the key. Take your time. And, and by doing it by hand, there's no risk of anything, you know, you're gonna have too big of a hole. So I'm just twisting it nice and easy. It's going in really good. So obviously, this is a tapered reamer. So it's gonna be bigger on the top and not on the bottom. So, so we have to make sure the clearance is going to be all the way across. I'm going to take the nuts and washers off this pot again and then uh, just take it. Yeah, we're good, getting close, kind of close there. So I was at the tape. So I'm going to take my tape and I'm going to loosen it up. I'm going to take it back just a little bit more. So take my tape off. So go about another, I don't know, sixteenth of an inch, eighth of an inch. And now once again, carefully place my reamer in there. Give it a couple more turns. Now, if this is something you're thinking, no, this is, a, I can't do this. Yeah, it's a little bit tight. This is something that you think, uh, look at, this is just not me. I'm too nervous about this. You know, take it to your uh, local guitar tech. Say, hey, I need these opened up for a 3 8 clearance. You know, at most, you know, they'll do it. And then you don't have to worry about it. And if it's somebody that you work with, there we go. We got a clearance on there now. All right. It's in there real good. Let's do the other one. Now we have our tape marked on this so we know how far to go. Now, preferably, I like to do this a lot closer to me personally. There's so much space in between me and the guitar right now. It makes me kind of, it's like not ideal. I like it to be within, you know, a couple inches. So that way I have I, the guitar is closer to me, I have more control over it. But for sakes, for purpose of this video, it's, there's, a, there's more distance than I would like. Hope that makes all sense. Yeah, I think we're there. So let's pull that out. Since we marked the tape there with the last one, we know this is a good one. Yeah, look at there. Fits nice. Not too sloppy. Could I could use a little bit more, actually, but I think we'll be fine. That's good. Look at there. Looks really good. 
open those up they're all the same size now so uh yeah i think we're uh we're ready start move to the next task i'm going to go ahead and put the nut and washers back on this so we don't lose them there we go get our right get this reamer out of the way definitely do not want to set the guitar down on that one so now back to where we left off which was putting shield tape in here which i have to say is probably not going to be the easiest task but it needs to be done and um, especially with the terminator system one thing that uh, a lot of people notice, because our pots are designed to uh, be, you know, just incredible note clarity and and uh, improvement on tone. That uh, without proper shielding, uh, sometimes you're going to pick up more noise too, not just the strings and the note clarity. It's just going to, you know, whatever noise is going to be. So that's why we recommend, highly recommend, using shield tape on cavities that are not properly shielded. So let's go ahead and get started here. Sometimes the hardest part is just finding the edge. There we go. I'm just gonna lay this one right across the bottom. So we wanna make sure, you know what, let me get that right there. I'm just gonna try to get it as flat as possible. I may have to just like make some tear spots. Actually, I'm gonna tape these back a little bit further. A little tighter back. Get this, this bridge ground more out of the way. There we go. Like I said, it doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be effective. Don't worry about the holes. We'll get those later. So I go around this corner. Looks like I'm going to have to tear the tape a little bit. You know, you do want to have it as flat as possible, especially around where the components are going to be mounted. So I think we're doing pretty good there. All right. Yeah, that looks pretty good there. We got. Just that one piece took us quite a, quite a ways crossed here. Look at that. So I think I'm going to try to do like a little piece in here now. I'm just going to cut a little piece off. Just kind of stick it over that. You know, sometimes it's kind of nice to try to get continuity between it all if you can. Just by, you know, folding over a little piece. It's not necessary, but because it is kind of... Yeah, let's get that. So we got that side there. Let's go over there now. Go over to this side. Kind of try to get the bottom covered up. That's what I'm meaning, because trying to do right now is get all the pieces on the bottom just covered. And then we'll work on the sides. So now I'm going to try to get over here on this corner over here where the switch pot is. Kind of cut a piece that kind of fits right in there. <clears throat> then we'll go along the sides. I need to get one more over here. Yeah, just one little one across there. And 
and I think we'll start working the sides of it. It's kind of a weird control cavity where they got these, how they routed that out instead of a big, you know, they kind of put these big parts in here, which is kind of neat because I don't know how many Gibsons I've opened up and, you know, when it's really close like that and it's busted off, I think I at least, I think at least all my Gibsons had that. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like this part here is just busted off from, the, you know, not having enough meat between where the screw is and the edge of the cavity. So this one here is, I don't think you have to worry about this one busting off or any of the other ones. What I mean by busted off is like the wood will crack across here for those that may not know. But, all right, let's go around the sides. But since it's like the way it is, I think what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna, instead of trying to do one long piece, you know, I might do that over here. I mean, let me try it. Let me see, it's, it might be a little difficult because these are these cavities are, are so far in. It might, might be difficult, but let me try it. Maybe I'll do this section here. Let me see how that works. Back off. Plus when you work with longer pieces, it's kind of tough too. So I'm gonna try to, yeah, look at that. Yeah, it's a little bit tough going around this corner here. But we got it. Might have to... Yeah, it's all right. Kind of went on an angle a little bit. Not ideal. But actually, I'm going to leave that part there. I'm going to tear this part here off. You want to have a little bit to come over the top because, but you want it to be, you can tear this off. What I might do is stick this down in that corner there. Yeah, kind of like that. Tear that off. I'm gonna tear this off. There we go. Then that would be our connection with the top right there. Yeah, you kind of you might not be able to see it in the video, but we got a from the angle of the air app. But this side here is now all covered. Looks good. Let's come across this side, see how we do. Let me see if I can maybe come over, start on this end and come across. These look like deeper pockets, so I'm gonna try to do shorter with these. pretty good touching all we kind of got all the way over the other side there push that in push that in and we're sticking over the top here but that's okay we're just gonna tear it off no nope. could even just let it go over the top actually if we wanted to I, you know, I think I'm going to tear it off. I'm just going to grab it like that, and that's it. Just kind of tear it up against the edge. It's kind of nice because you when you cut it tight up there, see how it just kind of, when you tear it off, it just kind of tears, tear it up against, just right against the edge of the cavity. I'm going to leave that little spot there. If this get a little bit like this, that's no big deal because you want to have continuity between the top and the, and the control plate anyways. So that'll do it. So I'm gonna take this one off. Tear that off. I'm gonna take this off because there's a screw hole there and I definitely don't want it to be in the screw hole. 
So flip that up. Yeah, it doesn't want to get up there. This is where our little ass screwdriver comes in handy. Yeah. There we go. The multi purpose tool. <laughs> so, all right, so we're through there. We just have this section here now. We got, oh, you know, I kind of might put a little piece down here. Yeah, I think I will. But I'm not going to worry about it. Let's finish this piece and then we'll go through, and if there's any places where I didn't get covered that well, we'll. Uh, over that. So, okay. Our last little section here. Yeah, that looks good. Now our control, uh, our jack wire is going to come through here. We're just going to go right over it. The new jack, the Mad Hatter jack, is actually shielded, so we don't need to go in here. So all we want to do is just I'm going to stick it into here first and then wrap it around. There we go. There we go. That looks good. piece here that was that I tore off. I think I'm gonna lay right in here just to cover up a little spot there. I think now I'm just being kind of a little over uh, over the top here. I think that's good. Yeah because our pot's gonna be laying in there. So yeah so I think we got it. Now let's do our control plate. Might as well do that now. Let's move the guitar out of the way. So, I think we're gonna do, looks like we just need two pieces. there. Now let's get another piece. Second piece can go right across there. All right. Once again, I'm just going to tear. We got the plate done, so I don't. I really would not want anything come over the edges. Just push against the edges like that. You see there? And that one there is going to take a little bit more. First thing I do is I just kind of take it and I just kind of. You can use a razor knife. But I find just pulling, pushing down on the edge. That gets it pretty good. like that. Oh, tore a little too much there. <laughs> oh well. We'll put a little piece back on there. How's that? Yeah, how'd that work out for you, Ed? Jeez. what I'm gonna do what I like to do is so I got it pretty much like that so what I'll do is get a, like a, a razor knife 
So you can tear it off like I did, or you can just lay it down and take a razor knife and just go around the edges, whatever you think is best. I think I might've just created more work for myself. Sometimes they go easy, sometimes they go like this. So anyways, we'll clean that up later. Um, go through that. So we got everything shielded now. So let's clean up our workspace from all the stuff here. All right, so we got the shield tape in there. As you can see, we need to clear up our holes now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push down with my finger where the holes are at and just kind of push around the edge there just to get it to kind of, I take my fingernail and just kind of, or you can take the little ass screwdriver, just kind of go around the edges. I do that over here. Here, I'll do it over here. I'm not sure if you can see all right. Let me see if I can. Yeah, there we go. I think you can see that. I'm just going to go around the edges carefully. We don't. We want to try to avoid any shield tape getting down. Um, it's not going to matter too much on these volume pot holes because the hole is a 3 8 hole and our, our goes to 11 volume pots are um, 8 millimeters, so there's plenty of room. So, but on the on the push-pull pots, let's get that little piece out of there, we got that, set it out of the way. On our push-pull pots though, we got to be very careful because we did ream them out, but we didn't leave uh, much room for uh, any other debris in there, so we want to get as best as we can. Go around the edge there. All right, that one's just kind of come around the other side. So get that out of there. And what I might do is uh, see how it, how it looks here. What I might want to do is try take our push pull pot. I don't know how many times I've taken these on and off here, but and I want to see how it fits in here. There we go. It's right in there. What do you know? So we'll pull that back out. Good deal. Now let's do the other one. That way we know there's no surprises later when we uh, go to put it in permanently. Bit. And a little piece down in there. I'm gonna come underneath here, kind of push it up. There we go. And then I'm gonna get down in there. Sorry for my hands being in the way. All right, we got that little piece out of there. Let's make sure it's gonna fit okay. Yep. Look at there. We mounted right in there. to see something here so that's fitting right on the top there yeah we'll be good I wanted to see how much depth we have in here so we're gonna put our lock washer in there now let's say you have a situation just a little tip here so if you can see in there this is sitting all the way down let's say you have to push it all the way down in there just to get a little bit uh, a washer and a nut on here but you can't get a lock washer. When doing that, what you're gonna end up doing is that these terminals are gonna be very, very close to the uh, shield tape. And it might even cause a little noise, maybe some uh, short out. Um, I haven't heard of anybody dealing with that yet, but you never know. And what I like to do is I like to take, that's the case, and especially that happens with Les Pauls, 
in our goes to 11 volume pot, sometimes the neck on a Les Paul, the carved top is so tight, it's like we have to take all this off to put it in there. And when you do, these terminals are practically laying on a shield tape and you don't want these to be getting too close. So usually what I do is I take a little piece of electrical tape, just take it like this and just lay it across, just like that. And it creates a buffer between the pot and the shield. So we already don't need it on this guitar. I got it on there, I'm just gonna leave it, so. But it's not necessary. You know, maybe I'll just pull it off. Yeah, it will come off. I'll take it out of there. That's just a little helpful hint. Also, like on our selector switches, uh, especially like on the Ibanez S series, the uh, with the IBZ system. Let me see, we got a selector switch here. Maybe I'll grab it, hold on. This is an our IB, this is our three-way toggle CLR, but the point is if you have it in a cavity and it's really close to the top, or you know, what, what I'll do is I'll just take, you know, you're a little concerned about it, just take a little electrical tape like this. And just kind of take it off like that, and then just lay it across. That's all you gotta do. And uh, that'll help protect it from getting too close to the shield or whatever. Um, the Ibanez S series, uh, that one is really, people that know that guitar, it's really thin. And uh, these get really close to the control cavity top uh, cover. So it's always a good idea to do this. And um, that way, because I've had a guitar one time that was like, I think like an Ibanez S, I think it was or something. And this contact was actually touching the, uh, the bottom of the control plate. I put a little tape on it like that and that solved the problem. No more issues, so. Just a little helpful hint there. So, okay. So I think we only got two more holes to go, don't we? So let's get those done. So I got this volume hole here. This would be the bridge volume pot. These are, like I said before, these are 3 8 holes. So we know there's gonna be plenty of clearance with the eight millimeter bushing on there. It goes to 11 volume pots. Get that out of there. Definitely wanna get these out of there. You don't want them in there floating around. They'll stick to something. The next thing you know, you got a short, you know. Yeah, when I'm talking, when I'm putting out the switch here, one thing to keep in mind is that when it comes to troubleshooting, one thing that's always the key, if there's a hum, it's usually an open signal. That means that something is just not connected properly. Check that, so that's what you look for first. If there's like dead silence, nothing, that is typically a short. That means the hot and ground are connected somewhere and uh, it's just, yeah, it's just a dead short. And that's how, uh, actually, the, our, kill, our rapid fire kill switch, that's what that does. It's, it's just, it creates a short. Shorts, that's why it goes in between the, uh, the output jack. So, get this, get that out of there. We're just about done with these, clearing these holes out. It's got one little piece here. There we go. We're gonna put in here Our Terminator three-way toggle. Uh, we just love this switch. Electro switch makes this for us. Um, it's basically a sealed, as you can see, it's all sealed. It's much smaller than the Switchcraft, which I love Switchcraft. You know, don't get me wrong, they've been around forever, but I think this is, uh, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, this is a superior product, I think. So, uh, and inside of it uh, are gold contacts. And it's sealed, so you don't have to worry about getting dirty. It's uh, it's a great switch. Yeah, look, it goes right in there. Let me flip it up. I'm gonna hold my finger on there. Hold it down. I just want to see how it looks on this side. Yeah, great, nice. Put our little nut on there. 
I'm not going to mount. I just want to see how it fits right now. See what it looks like. Yeah, that looks good. Oops, let me get over here. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay, take that back off. Move that little last screw out of the way. Pull that out. All right, I think we're ready to move to the next step here. So what I want to do now is... We have our bridge out of the way, we have our neck pickup out of the way, we have our bridge ground out of the way. We've cleared our holes from the shield tape we've added. Uh, what I want to do now is I want to put the jack plate in. So I'm going to poke a little hole through here. Just for the, uh, the jack plate to uh, come through. So let me move the guitar out of the way. So there's our jack plate. Here is our switchcraft jack. Uh, we've been experimenting. Originally we used two wires. Uh, it's a black and a red. And then um, we decided uh, to go with the shield just to create, mainly because the Ivan has gem. Uh, we had a problem with uh, just having the two wires because we needed to be shielded because there's so much space between where the jack is and then where the components are that we needed that shield in there. So plus he uses a barrel jack and, and those Ibanezes. So we decided to switch them all over to shield it. We had some uh, uh, PVC coated shielded, uh, kind of messing around with this braided mainly because it's a lot thinner, easier to work with. I like it. So uh, we've been doing this lately. We've been kind of jumping around. Um, so your system may come with this, it may come with uh, PVC coated, but it'll definitely be shielded. We're definitely uh, not changing that. So earlier I saved the star washer. I'm gonna put that back on there. So, you know, sometimes the components of your, of your last guitar, you know, maybe you wanna use them. So I want, actually, I only like that, I wanna use that, like that. I don't, my hand will just use that washer and put it like this. See, the washer has a little concave to it. Um, so I'm going to try to set it up so the curve goes that way. There we go. And then tighten it up. Now, let's see here. One thing about this guitar that I know is I'm going to grab my wrench here. Tighten it up. All right, that's not moving. There we go. You want to be careful. You don't want this to lean against that because that is a short. So you want to make sure when you put it in, this is going to be not touching that. Um, we have had, uh, I've had it happen. Some customers have had it happen where they put the jack in, they plug in their guitar, and it's like dead silence. There's nothing. Basically, they have a dead short because this part here is touching the inside of the cavity wall and it's shorting out. So you want to be careful of that. You want to check it. So let's, I think on this guitar, we're not going to have that issue. Let me pull it up here. And I think the reason why, if you can see there, <laughs> look at you. we have a lot of room there. You can almost drive a freight train through there. So we have no worries there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to try to fish the wires from the output jack through that little hole I made. So let's lay it down. Wish me luck here. I think I might even just twist these together just to bring these wires as one. Let's see if I can hit it there. Look at there. Got it. There we go. Now, on these here, we got like a little curvature. We're gonna put it in like that. I think we got plenty of room. All right, let's grab those four little screws. Dump out our screws here. Grab the four little ones. There we go. Put these control co cover back in the, our glass. Get our screwdriver. I 
hand start them. Always hand start them. That way you can make sure you're not where you get them the way they came out originally. You're not trying to make another hole or if it's a machine screw, you're not cross threading it. Because if you can't do it by hand, you're doing it wrong. So we got them started. What I like to do is See, I'm holding the guitar, placing my thumb here kind of as a guide. I'm not going to tighten it up. I'm just going to get it to where it's almost tight. And then, do the next one. I drop screwdrivers a lot. That's why I like to work this way. I'm using a screwdriver as much as possible and hold on to it. So, there we go. I want to grab, well, now I want to go around, and, oh, I'm sorry, before that, let's go around and just tighten it up. You know, we're, we don't need to be, you know, don't wrench down on it so tight that it's just, use your best judgment, judgment until it just feels like, you know, see how I'm choked up on this? The reason why I'm, I'm just using two fingers, and I'm just going around, and I tighten it to where it feels like it's, it's tight enough. I'm not grabbing with my fist and trying to, because if I wanted to strip these out, I'm sure I could, anybody could, but it doesn't need to be that tight. It just needs to hold it in place, that's all. So what I do is I want to grab a cable, just kind of push it in and out of there, just to see how it, make sure there's nothing that's going to instruct, obstruct it. All right. Yep, yeah, seems to be good. Now the only thing we got to watch out for is make sure that when that's going in, it's not touching up against this ground, the shield. So, but we'll find out. Well, I'm sure I don't see it moving when I go in and out. So that's what I'm watching. So when I go in and out, that didn't move at all. So it's probably not touching at all. I'm sure it's not kind of bent it out of the way so it wasn't. And that's been kind of our debate whether we stick with this or go with the, uh, or just stay with the PVC because the PVC we wouldn't have to worry about the shield getting caught on here. So you may see different. Uh, if you have, if you find with this, just watch out for that. If you're uh, see with the PVC jacket, which is kind of like what this is, then you know be careful of that. And you know Gibson's pretty much use all hard uh, uses shielded like this, so. Let's tape this out of the way. Let's tape it over here. Let's get our blue tape. Okay. All right. There we go.